the knowledge about this, Castor Oil, had been cast down to the beings of Egypt from those beings of the continent of Atlantis who belonged to the learned society of Octans. And the third substance is the one that from the dawn of centuries has been extracted from what is called the Cinchona tree. Single quote. And now, my boy, listen to the information I shall give you about the title of doctor recently invented to designate terrestrial physicians. This too, it seems, is an invention of the beings of that important community of Germany, and they thought of this appellation in order to indicate some merit or other of certain of them, but this same invention was soon spread over the whole planet and for some reason became the ordinary form of address for all contemporary physicians there. It must even be emphasized that, thanks to this invention, yet one more is added to the many factors that taken as a whole constantly lead them into error and render their being mentation, already weakened without this, year by year more, gelatinous. On account of their new word, doctor, even are of whom, in spite of having an incomparably more normal presence than theirs, and a being reason of much higher quality, once had a very disagreeable and even idiotic misadventure on that planet. But it would be much better, in my opinion, if he told you about it himself. With these words, Beelzebub turned to Ahun and said, Tell us, old fellow, how this all happened and what it was that all day long for several days made you school match it, and Sirito Okaibit, or, as the three brain beings of the planet Earth would say, grumble, and sputter, like your friend, named Bess. Quote. Then a moon, again imitating the style of Beelzebub and even his very intonation, began to relate as follows. This misadventure of mine occurred in the following circumstances. During this sixth visit of ours to the planet Earth, toward the very end we had to exist for a while in the capital of those German beings who, as his right reverence deigned to say, invented this, accursed, word, doctor. In the hotel where we had our place of residence, next to my room more, as is said, in the, number, next to mine, there existed two very agreeable beings who had only recently celebrated the sacrament of the union of the active with the passive for the purpose of serving the great all-universal proto-autogocratic process by the continuation of their species are, as your favorites would say, they had not been, married, long and were still considered, newlyweds. By chance, I became acquainted with this young couple in the house of some friends of mine, and after that they often invited me to their room for what is called a cup of tea, and sometimes I even used to drop in on them without being invited, in order to shorten the wearisome German evenings, the passive half of this couple was, as is said there, in an interesting condition, she was expecting her, Firstborn. Like myself, they were in the capital for an indefinite period, for reasons connected with the profession of the active half of this young couple and, as I said, were staying in the same hotel that we were. His profession, by the way, was highly original, even according to the notions of the beings of this incomparable planet he was famous in his own country as one of the best specialists in the art of adorning the faces of his clients with the stars, so here to the students of German universities. One day I heard a nervous rapping on the wall of my room. 
I instantly ran next door and found that the husband was not at home, having had to go off somewhere just that day. Meanwhile the young wife had felt faint and, on the point of losing consciousness, instinctively rapped on the wall. When I entered she already felt a little better, but implored me to hurry for a doctor. Of course I rushed out into the street. But once there I thought, and now where shall I go? Suddenly I remembered that not far from our hotel there lived a being whom everybody called Doctor, and this title of Doctor was even engraved in front of his name on a metal plate on the door of his house, so it was to this house that I ran. But it turned out that he was at dinner, and his servant asked me to wait a few minutes in the drawing room, explaining that the doctor and his guests would finish dinner immediately and would soon be coming out. So I sat down in the drawing room to wait, but I cannot say that I sat very quietly. I was sitting, on live coals, as they say, for I was most anxious about the condition of my neighbor. The honorable doctor, however, did not come almost 20 minutes past I could bear and no longer and rang the bell. When the servant entered I begged her to remind the doctor about me and to say that I was in a great hurry and could not wait for him any longer. She went away. Another five minutes passed. At last the doctor appeared. I hurriedly explained to him what I had come for, but to my astonishment he began to roar with laughter. I thought to myself, obviously while dining with his friends this doctor has drunk a glass too many of German beer. And only when he had recovered a little from his hysterical laughter could he tell me that to his great regret he was not a doctor of medicine, but only a doctor of philosophy. At that moment I experienced such a state that it was as if I were hearing for the second time the sentence of exile passed by our endlessness upon his right reverence and those nearest him, and in consequence upon me. Well, dear Hassane, I left the drawing room of that doctor and was once more out in the street, in the same predicament as before. Just then a taxi happened to come along. I jumped into it, asking myself, where now? Then I remembered that in a cafe where I sometimes went, I often noticed a being whom everybody called Doctor. I ordered the driver to hurry to that cafe. There a waiter I knew told me that this doctor had indeed been there but had just left with some of his acquaintances, and that he had accidentally overheard them mention the name of a restaurant where they were going, and he gave me the address. Although this restaurant was some distance away, I told the driver to take me there, as I knew of no other doctor. At long last, after half an hour, we reached the restaurant and I soon found this doctor. Once again it turned out that he was not a physician, but a doctor of jurisprudence. This time I was really, as it said there, up against it. Single quote. Finally it entered my head to address myself to the head waiter of the restaurant and tell him exactly what I was looking for. This head waiter turned out to be very obliging. He not only explained to me what had to be done, but even a calm. He need me to the house of a certain physician, this time called a doctor of obstetrics. 
Fortunately we found him at home and he was good enough to agree to come with me immediately but before we got there my poor neighbor had already brought forth her first born, a boy, and having somehow swaddled the baby without anyone's help, was sound asleep after the terrible suffering she had endured in solitude. And so, from that day on, I have with my whole being detested the sound of the word, doctor, and I would advise each of the beings of the planet Earth to use this word only when he is very, very angry. In order that you may understand better the significance of contemporary positions on your planet, I must also impart to you the following saying of our highly esteemed Mullah Nasser Eddin. He speaks of them thus, For our sins, God has sent us two kinds of physicians, one to help us die, the other to prevent us from living. Quote, Chapter 32, Hypnotism. And so, Beelzebub continued, during this sixth and last sojourn of mine on the surface of the planet Earth, I decided to settle there for a long stay and to become a professional physician and I did indeed become one, only not such as most of them are, I chose instead the profession of what they call, physician hypnotist. Single quote. I became one of these professionals in the first place because in recent centuries they are the only ones on that planet who have access to all the classes or castes I spoke of and, since they inspire great confidence and possess authority, they evoke in ordinary beings a sincerity that enables these professionals to penetrate, as is said, their inner world. Single quote. And second, I chose this profession in order to have the possibility, while attaining my personal aim, also to give genuine medical assistance to some of those unfortunates. Indeed, my boy, during recent times, among all the beings of whatever class, on all the continents of that planet, there has been, and there still is, a great need for such physicians. I may say that I already had a wide experience in this specialty, since during my previous elucidations of certain subtleties of the psyche of individual favorites of yours, I had had recourse many times to the methods used there by this kind of physician. I must tell you that formerly your favorites, like all the other three brain beings of the universe, did not possess the particular psychic property that permits them to be brought into what is called a hypnotic state, to fall into such a state became proper to your favorites owing to certain combinations in their psyche arising from the disharmony of the functioning of their common presence. This strange psychic property appeared soon after the destruction of Atlantis and became fixed in the presence of every one of them from the time when their Zustat, that is, the functioning of their being consciousness, began to be divided and there was gradually formed in them two entirely different consciousnesses having nothing in common with each other, the first of which they called simply consciousness, and the second, when they finally noticed it in themselves, the subconscious. If you try to represent clearly to yourself and to transubstantiate in the corresponding parts of your common presence what I am about to explain, you will perhaps understand almost half of all the reasons why the psyche of your favorite's breathing on the planet Earth has finally become such a unique phenomenon. This psychic peculiarity of falling into a hypnotic state is as I have just said, inherent only in the three brain beings of this planet of yours, and one can therefore say that if they did not exist, 
then in the whole of our great universe there would not exist even a being notion of hypnotism. Before explaining more about all this, it is appropriate to emphasize that although during the last 20 centuries almost the entire ordinary waking existence of most of the three brain beings who have taken your fancy, particularly of the contemporary ones, has proceeded under the influence of this property of theirs, they give the name of technotic state, only to that state during which the process of this peculiar property flows in them at an accelerated rate and produces concentrated results. And they fail to notice or, as they would say, they are not struck by the incongruous results of this property recently fixed in the ordinary process of their existence because on the one hand in the absence of normal self perfecting they lack what is called a wide horizon and on the other hand arising and existing according to the principle of etoplanots it has become proper to them to forget very quickly what they perceive but when the results of this property begin to accelerate at ly concentrate all incongruous manifestations their own and those of others become so real that they are strikingly obvious and unavoidably perceptible even to their bobtail reason and even if certain of them should by chance notice something illogical in their own manifestations or those of another, then, not having the knowledge of the law of type, they ascribe it to the traits of character of the given being. This abnormal property of their psyche was first observed by the learned beings of the city of Gob in the country of Moralplesi, and they even made it the basis for a serious and detailed branch of their science which spread over the whole planet under the name of the science of non-responsible manifestations of personality. But later, when the turn of their periodic process of reciprocal destruction came around again, this important branch of their science, which was still comparatively normal, began gradually to be forgotten, like all their good attainments, and finally it also entirely disappeared. And it was only many centuries later that this branch of science showed signs of reviving. But thanks to the fact that at this period most of the learned beings had already become learned beings of new formation, they sat upon this revival so hard that before the poor thing had time to develop, it soon found its way onto the common rubbish heap. And this happened in the following manner. A learned being named Mesmer, by birth from the country called Austria-Hungary, and modest unlike his contemporaries, once happened to notice clearly in the course of certain of his experiments the real duality of consciousness in beings like himself. He was greatly impressed by this and devoted himself entirely to this question which interested him. Continuing to observe and to study, he almost succeeded in understanding it. But later, when he began making practical experiments to clear up certain details, it was then that there was manifested toward him a particularity proper to the learned beings of new formation, there. This particularity of the terrestrial, learned beings of new formation, is called, pecking to death. Single quote. As this honest Austro-Hungarian learned being conducted his experiments not as all the learned scientists of new formation had become mechanized to do, he was, as is the custom there, meticulously pecked to death. And the process of pecking to death 
Of this poor mesmer was so effective that for nearly two centuries it has continued from generation to generation among the learned beings of the earth. For instance, all the books now dealing with the question of hypnotism, and there are thousands of them, always begin by saying that this mesmer was neither more nor less than a rogue with an itching palm, and a charlatan of the first water, but that our honest and great learned beings soon saw through him and prevented him from doing serious mischief. The more the contemporary learned beings of this peculiar planet are idiots squared, the more they criticize Mesmer and say or write every possible kind of absurdity to discredit him. And in doing this, they criticize just that honest and humble learned being of their planet who, if he had not been pecked to death, would have revived the only science which is absolutely necessary for them and by means of which alone they might perhaps be saved from the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer. There is no harm in noting here that just before I left that planet forever, precisely the same thing as had occurred to this mesmer was being repeated there on this occasion the victim was an honest and humble learned being belonging to the community of France, who after persistent and conscientious labors came across the possibility of curing that terrible disease so widely spread in recent times that it now exists on a general planetary scale. E. This terrible disease is called cancer. As this Frenchman also made practical experiments to elucidate the details of his discovery not in the customary way, other contemporary scientists thereupon manifested toward him that same particularity of pecking to death. Possibly now, my boy, there begin to be crystallized in your presence data for engendering an unshakable conviction, that thanks to the learned beings of new formation, in whom this particularity has been implanted of not failing to peck to death, every colleague of theirs who does not conform to what has been established by the abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence, what is called the sacred Anquano, upon which, among other things, the very saintly Ashiata Shemash also counted, no longer proceeds in the presence of the three brain beings of this ill-fated planet. I chanced to learn about this essence-loving hope of his during my investigations of his very saintly activities there. Perhaps, my boy, you still do not know about the cosmic process of the sacred Ankuano. The sacred Ankuano is the name given to the process of perfecting objective reason in three centered beings, which takes place by itself simply from the flow of time. Single quote. As a rule, on all the planets of our great universe where Three brain beings breathe, the perfecting of objective reason can proceed only from personal conscious labor and intentional suffering. This sacred, Ankuano, can take place only on those planets on which all cosmic truths have become known to all the beings there. And all cosmic truths become known to everyone on those planets because those beings who by their conscious efforts learn some truth or other share it with others. And in this way, little by little, all cosmic truths become known to all the beings of that planet, whatever may be their aspirations and degree of self-perfecting. Thanks to this sacred process, intentionally actualized by our all-foreseeing common endless father in the three brain beings of these planets, 
It has been foreseen that during the action in their presence of the fundamental holy cosmic law of Triamazotomno, the excess of its third holy force, namely, the holy reconciling, obtained during the assimilation of cosmic truths of that order, should by itself crystallize in them the data for engendering that something, which is called egoitorian being will. Single quote. And so, my boy, this property of falling into a hypnotic state, recently fixed in the common presence of your favorites, consists in this, that the functioning of their zoostat, or as they themselves would say, their spiritual part, passes into that functioning of their common whole, which normally proceeds during their completely passive state, that is, during their Sleep, while the entire functioning of their planetary body remains as it has become proper for it to be during their waking state. Single quote. In order that you should more clearly represent to yourself and understand the results flowing from this astonishing psychic property, you must know first of all about two facts regarding the common presence of these favorites of yours. One of these facts appears in their common presence owing to the cosmic law of the self-adaptability of nature, and the other derives from those abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence they themselves have established, and about which I have repeatedly spoken. The first fact is that, from the time when, owing to their abnormal existence, there was formed in them the two system zoostat, that is, two independent consciousnesses, great nature gradually adapted herself to this until finally it came about that, after your favorites reach a certain age, there begin to proceed in them too, inkliots and ikshanas, of different tempos are, as they themselves would say, two different modes of, blood circulation. From this age on, each of these, inkliots and ikshanas, or, blood circulations, of different tempo evokes the functioning of one of their consciousnesses, and vice versa, the intensive functioning of either consciousness evokes the mode of blood circulation, corresponding to it. The difference between these two independent modes of blood circulation in their common presence depends on what is called the tempo dablokshernian circulation, or, according to the expression of their contemporary medicine, the extent of filling of the blood vessels, in other words, in the conditions of the waking state, the center of gravity of the blood pressure, in their common presence is situated in one part of the general system of blood vessels, whereas in the conditions of the passive state it is in another part. The second fact ensuing from the abnormal conditions of being existence of your favorites is that, from the first moment of the arising of their offspring, in order to make them correspond to these abnormal conditions around them, they intentionally try by every available means to fix in their logic nestarian localizations, as many impressions as possible derived exclusively from the artificial perceptions due to the results of their abnormal existence, and this maleficent AC. Tion toward their offspring they call education, the totality of these artificial perceptions gradually becomes isolated in their common presence and acquires its own independent functioning, related with the functioning of their planetary body only as much as is necessary for its automatic manifestation and it is this totality of artificial perceptions which, owing to their naivete, they now regard as their real, consciousness.
as for the sacred data put into them by great nature for genuine being consciousness, the consciousness which they ought to have from the very beginning of their preparation for responsible existence, along with the properties inherent in them for engendering the genuine sacred being impulses of faith, hope, love, and conscience, these